Our philosophy in teaching actual ski touring, even to beginners, is to teach them the techniques that this cross-country racer uses. Uh, the difference is tempo. A tourer skis much slower. In addition to technique, there is waxing, which is as important to a tourer for his enjoyment as it is to a racer for his time. In waxing, there are two factors. Uh, first is snow condition, and the second is the type of wax, and they go together. The wax itself comes in, in two types, hard wax and clisters. The waxes are, are color-coded so that a person can easily learn which ones correspond to which types of snow condition. One of the types of wax is called clister. It comes in a tube similar to a toothpaste tube and has a texture of glue. As you'll see, it's very fun to apply and <laughs> brings all kinds of humor into the sport. Okay, this is hard wax and this is how you apply it. It doesn't matter whether you go up or down as long as you cover the whole bottom of the ski and get it on, okay? Just rub it on in a simple manner such as this. It's a nice visible layer. This is what we would call a medium layer of hard wax. Okay, you also wax the groove with this kind of wax. Take the edge, put it in the groove. Okay. Now, you, should, you always smooth this out with a cork or your hand or something like that, such as this. You just take and you, you rub it until it basically disappears. The key to cross-country skiing technique is balance. Thus, we teach people to ski without poles at first so that they don't depend on them. Cross-country skiing technique is very similar to speed skating in that it involves both a kick and a glide. Single poling or diagonal stride is the most common technique used by the ski tour. It involves kicking with the left leg and poling with the right arm or vice versa at the same time. In other words, opposites are working together to propel skier forward. The second phase of the technique is double poling. It's used to increase one's speed on gradual downhills and on the flat. You use both poles at once, just as in, as in downhill skiing. The most frequently used turn is the so-called step turn. It's used on both the flat and on downhills for cruddy, crusty snow conditions. The key to this turn is to completely shift your weight from one ski to the next as you turn. One mistake you can make in the step turn is to overstep with a following or outside ski, resulting in crossing of the tips. Another mistake is to begin the turn with the outside rather than the inside ski, also resulting in crossing the tips. Both of these mistakes end in disaster. In all of these skiing techniques, the motion should be smooth, fluid, rhythmic, and relaxed. Each propelling action of the leg or arm should be followed by complete relaxation of that limb. When you put all these together, you soon find yourself getting into a, a rhythm.